Orange spider one. Looks like it. Hovering in the water currents, we're gobbling down the flicks. Go ahead and pull this up. Yo, guys, look who's this. Hey, I'm guy, I'm guy. First stop is fantastic. I'll keep it brief because I don't want to linger too long if people want to come in. They have really renovated the place, I feel like. Uh, one interesting thing is that it looks like they went with LED T5 fixtures. It's almost like ATI, but I'm not 100. Oh, yeah, it is ATI. That's cool. And they look really well stocked. These are, uh, I think, dancing goby and shrimp pear. Where's the shrimp? Check these out. Look at all these clowns in this cluster of anemones. Chances are they're probably comedy, but they do look really nice. Look at Ms. Average Reaver back in her elements. We'll try to uh, twist her arm into giving us like a tank tour to see like what's going on over there. Dude, look at this. They got a blue striped pipefish. They're trying to make a lagoon right here. Yeah, that's a neat look. Got some, uh, trying to grow some moss up here. Kind of curious if it'll work out because it's kind of like salt water here. So if that actually works, that'll be cool. We'll take notes here. Pretty well stocked today. Let's check out the fish. Look at all these baby Ocellaris. Nice storm clowns. Storm. These are really pretty. Ross. I wonder what kind of Ross is this? Coffiners? Comics or fairy rats? I'm terrible with rats, I need to brush up. Cheese, is that you? And dude, look at these scribbled rabbit fish. Um, so I've had rabbit fish, but they're really pale. This one's really beautiful. Same with these. The coloration is totally different from the ones I have. I had. And look at this uh, orange spotted one, two beautiful guys. Absolutely gorgeous. It looks like they uh, did some work to the display tank as well. Really cut back on the rock work. Let's see what's here. It looks, like, it looks like they have a lot of tension problem like me too. <laughs> you get that? What? I thought he was gonna get this guy right here. Because Joseph was like, I'm gonna get the lobster. It's like spiny lobster because he's been talking about this for a long time. Looks really cool, but probably gonna destroy the cleanup crew. Which lobster? Well, you can't really see. It's right in, like right at the corner. It's a purple lobster. Oh, is it like the purple reef lobster? Yeah, yeah purple, purple and blue. Okay, that's cool. All right, I guess we'll. I'm thinking. I'm... That's a monkey shrimp right there. Oh, I haven't seen those in a long time. Those are cool. I got some cool nudibranchs here too, but probably difficult to keep these guys alive. I think they eat sponge or something like that. I think that is going to get a get a coral. Man, shopping today. I think I'm still slowly getting into these kind of corals, like scullies and meat corals and whatnot. I know a lot of people love them. I'm, st I'm still slowly warming up to it. These are button scullies is all it is. Kind of cool. Little guys, maybe one of these say I'll try one, see how they do. I do like these little plates, but these plates look really cool as well. I think today, is it is today like buy one get one free? Just ran up and be like, yo, your car's gone. Your yeah, wife's man. gone, your baby's gone. That's, that's what happens if you keep a, you know, aquarium or reef. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the bottom the line. The wife just gone. Alright, we're going to Rick's. Oh, we... so she's so scared. It's like, it's 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 like, it's she's like, just started learning how to drive. It's on the road now. We're following Joseph. Of, it's not behind us. You got it. Go. Fadi, Fadi. Fadi? Yep, yeah, you got it. That tiger go shoot. One pair of pants later. Whenever we visit Frederick, we'll come to Briggs, we'll come to Fantastic because they're like five minutes away from each other. So I think uh, they, they kind of help each other out in that way. So it's fantastic. Hey, thank you. Oh my fresh water. Fresh water for Dennis? Yeah. I think you got some plants over there. Oh dude, they got a crowd over at the uh, saltwater department. So we'll check that later. Uh, we're gonna check out some fresh water stuff for my friend who started a uh, planted tank. Planted guppies and shrimp tank. Exciting. Always fun to have uh, more people in hobbies. Yeah, trying to see what they have here for fresh water stuff. I like what they're trying to do here. They use an airline host to do like a little feeding ring kind of deal. So duckweed does not cover all the uh, water surface. But unfortunately, it looks like the duckweed still went in it. I'm not a huge fan of uh, shrimp mixing like this because the offspring is going to be brown. The tricky part is that you may buy red one, but you don't know it's genetic. So in the, in the future, if you have a tank full of cherry shrimps, Maybe get some brown shrimp because uh, I got some genetics about the color in there too. Interesting yeah, yeah. little top tank. Ooh, you mad, bro? Terra's largest eel. This eel is awesome, although they get huge. I'm not sure what kind of damsel this is, but it's gorgeous. 
I actually want to get a uh, Springer Damso today if they have any in stock. Hellbot's always cool, beautiful color, but I'm looking at Springers. I don't think they have any Springers available. Oh man, look at these tiny little baby hippo tang. It's kind of like the ones I got when I first got them. This is pretty nice too. Yeah. She's gonna get this one. No. Oh yeah. No, she's getting that. So I think that's the damsel fish I want, Springers. But I don't see. I don't think they have any uh, okay, out here. So he is going for one of those dragon pipe fish, big chunky ones. All right. So they have one of the fish I'm looking for, the uh, Mali Mulugani, because supposedly they uh, eat aptasia, at least small aptasias. That guy's tiny though. There's one in the back, a little bit bigger, but doesn't look like what I see in pictures. So. Okay, Molly Miller Blenny. I wasn't sure if that one is it. But that looks like it. So we'll go ahead and pick one up. 20 bucks, not bad at all. Aptasia control, hopefully. Actually, nice surprise to have a yellow eye coal tank here. Probably a leftover from the Hawaii band. Interesting, they're actually carrying worldwide corals frags here. And here's the uh, one of the display tanks right here. Lots of big corals, chunky colony. Really love seeing stuff like this. That's a nice eight can colony. And look at these porch, not for sale. Oh, that's a nice piece too. Lots of great stuff. Two hours later. All right, guys, and here he is, the Molly Miller Blenny back at home. And we'll talk a little bit more about what's so special about this particular Blenny uh, once he get acclimated into the tank. For that, we're gonna use the $10 social acclimation box that we built in the last video. Go, 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 go. First, <laughs> we're gonna pull apart this really tough magnet. Oh. Uh. Oh, really, strong, really strong. You want to try it? I don't want to okay. try it. Not interested at all. I have a bad feeling about this. Don't say that shit. <laughs> and then his tank crack. <laughs> okay, not oh, this perfect. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Dude is freaking out. Just lock the. Let's close this real quick. <laughs> How much is it? This is $20. No way. This is $20. I would rather get a pie fish. One thing I was not expecting is that the door, for whatever reason, is not. It's not locking. It's kind of like huh? plop, plop, plop. You see? <laughs> For whatever reason, yeah, it should be locking. That's what the What's heck, the man. <laughs> yeah, I can swim out. Close it. Duct tape. <laughs> I mean, that could work. I'm thinking for now, just like put a rock on it. Put a rock and weigh it down. That's weird. It was it was locking before. Oh, look at this guy. This guy's hiding now. Look at it. He, he moved in. Look, he moved in. This is uh, what I look like maybe one or two days out of the week. You'll have she to put me in the doghouse like that. Yeah, I need to figure out what's, <laughs> what to do with the top. That's not good. All right, this is hardly the most elegant solution, but I just kind of shoved two zip tie through the, uh, the the handle holes. And that just what happened to kind of wedge the door close. And if I need to open it up to feed or whatnot, I just pull the two uh, zip tie out and it's good to go. The fish really pushed strong enough against it. They could bust it open. But for now, we should be okay. I mean, we're trying to trap a blending anyways. And it's real weird because like, um, I swear the door is able to like go down and lock. And I try to wedge it to make sure this thing is sit flush and it was. So it's really, really strange. Don't know what's going on, but for now this will do. One note is that I'm actually using PVC elbow because I heard that in QD tank, uh, if you use just regular PVC pipe, sometimes you may roll and it may spook or even hurt the fish. So PVC elbow does, is not as likely to roll and I just so happen to have some laying around. Around. So this is perfect. Look at this little guy. Give him a chance to really scout out the tank, scout out the tank mate. Although to be honest, I don't think any of the fish will really pay a Blenny much mind. Blenny's probably just gonna swim right to the rock and stick his head out from a crevice. But better to be safe than sorry. Look at this guy. This guy's kind of tracking us. Like I was over there, it looked that way. I'm over here now, is looking this way. So it's kind of cool. And I guess all the fish is kind of like freaked out by the tank. Uh, Leon, what are you doing? Three days later. Dude, look at this guy. This guy's so ready to go in. He's uh, getting really comfortable here inside the uh, social acclimation box right here. Look, he's like, let me out. Let me out. Let me out of here. Look at guys, Gobi is coming up to say hi. Or maybe you're just waiting for food. The Molly Miller Blenny is like, 
Mom, can I go out and play? And Mom's like, nope. You're in time out. That's what you are. Yeah, one interesting thing is that he's not yeah. afraid of me anymore. I guess he knows that it means no harm and I bring food, so... <laughs> Turning into a puppy dog kind of deal. Alright, so one thing that seems to work out is um, some of these food actually naturally drift into this uh, container box due to its location. And look at the Molly Miller blend, you're just kind of going nuts. And this is great, I'm feeding Flake and is, uh, is just gobbling down the flakes already, so that is a fantastic sign. And no fish shows it pays him any mind. So that tells me that... So this tells me that the blend is ready to go. It's ready to go into the tank. I want to fatten him up a little bit before really releasing him to the tank. Because he is going to compete with all those big boys out there for food. Look at those guys go. Quadruple gobies here, just kind of hovering in the water currents, waiting for food to drift by. Amphius just kind of dashing behind the food, same thing with the hippo tang and the yellow tang. And did I mention how large the hippo tang is now? It's insane. It's growing so fast. It's roughly four inches now. It's only been what, like half a year? My goodness. The next morning. For those of you who may not be familiar with the Molly Miller's Blenny, you may be wondering, oh, what's so special about this uh, really draped looking Blenny? Well, the not so well known thing about this particular Blenny is that. They are actually known to eat some of the smaller Aptasia pests and enemies, and that's huge. The Evo crabs totally took care of the bubble algae. Uh, I don't see any bubble algae now, which is a fantastic thing. Uh, the next thing I want to target is the Aptasia, and after that, it's gonna be the uh, Estruvenus starfish. A lot of things going on in this tank. Hey, oh my boy, got a little pen. I'll go it. This may be slightly goofy because it's like the first time I'm doing this. How should I do this? Should I open it? I should open the top. Yeah, actually, let me open the top. Why don't you just take out that tube? <laughs> you know, Emily has a uh, 10 point IQ over me. Come to the side, come, come under me so you can see the tube. <laughs> so the fish is in here right now, right? He's in, in there, right? Is he in there? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Emily has a 10 point higher IQ than me. And I think uh, sometimes this 10 point make a world of difference. I think like so. Like right now, look, the fish is in there. You see him? No. Nope. You see him? Put it higher, higher, higher. Yep. Whoa! <laughs> don't, don't move. Stop there. Yep. I can show you the world. I'm just gonna drop it here. As I Boop. get this tank out. I just saw. <laughs> so cute. Is he in there? Yeah. He's like, what the hell is going on? What? Clean. Good call. Good call. Good call. Moments later. So while uh, Emily went back up to work, look at this. Here is the decisive moment. Uh, I figured this is a perfect time to give the Blenny a chance to really kind of like pick the spot he wants to go into. I kind of doubt the other fish are gonna hassle him. Number one, we have not seen any behavior from other fish while uh, this little guy's in the acclimation box. Oh, looks like a Blenny has decided to venture out. I'm kind of curious where he'll end up picking. Oh, look at that. That Emma crab is totally looking for trouble. Emma crab is like kind of waving her claws and going towards Blenny. So kind of as a yardstick, I do have quite a few clusters of like baby aptasias right here around the zoas and down here as well. So uh, hopefully the Mala Miller Blenny is gonna live up to his reputation of eating small aptasias and uh, help polish some of these off. That would be fantastic. And that's one of the main, main reason that I got this little guy right here. Looks like he is off into the rocks. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this uh, PVC pipe out. And very important, put the mesh top back on when you're adding new fish because new fish are probably gonna freak out and jump. By the way, some of you guys are asking if the final mesh is gonna have like salt creep. I rinsed this mesh maybe three weeks ago and I've never had an issue with uh, salt creep kind of like plugging up all of these holes. So far this really fine size mesh has worked really well for me, probably because I'm not doing any like super aggressive bubble scrubbing. But if you have a lot of surface agitation, a lot of sprays, then you may have an issue with a uh, salt creep here. But for me, no problem at all. Maybe every three months or so, I just put the whole thing under the shower to rinse out any possible salt cream and whatnot. Like you can see, it's, it's almost invisible against the water. Uh, so that's why I really like this mesh top. And of course, a big benefit is that the mesh grip is really, really fine. So these small, small gobies like Yasha gobies, hyphen gobies cannot like jump through the mesh and land on top and able to get back in. So in my personal experience, I really like this finer material versus the like one eighth or one quarter size mesh uh, that people sell with DIY kits. All right, there's a blendy right there. He is actually on the rock with a lot of aptasias right there. So the cool thing about these uh, Molly Miller Blenny is that they are known to eat 
it's baby aptasias. While I haven't seen any actual video of this planet eating aptasias, but there's enough people saying that this happens, that I, I, I have to believe it. In terms of fish that eats aptasias, the copper band butterfly fish is one of those that's like tried and true and a lot of people suggest it. But the problem with the copper band, as much as I want one, is that I do have a clam right there and in the future I do plan to add more clam as well. Uh, so that makes me a little bit nervous about adding the copper band because clam is on the menu. Some people say that totally fine with copper band and the reef with uh, those giant clams but it's just kind of risky. Okay the blend you just picked at something I'm not sure what. And right here I'm just kind of waiting to see if he happens to come upon Aptasia and it'll be amazing if I can actually catch him eating eating one. So this guy is like a puppy dog. He has no fear of uh, people at all. Look at that he's just coming towards me. Or maybe you see his reflection in the in the lens or something I don't know. But this guy's pretty cool. Definitely has a personality. Look at those two little horns coming out of his head. How awesome is that? This guy deserves a name for real. All right, Blenny, do your thing. Hunt down those Aptasias. Three days later. I wish I could say that he has really attacked the Aptasias, but as you can see, the Aptasias is still there. I don't think the Aptasia number has really decreased. But then again, the fish has only been in the tank for a week or so, so I will be patient and we'll see what developed. For the first few days, the Blenny has just been chilling in front of the tank and whenever I'm close to the tank, he'll just cast him to the front. But for the last two or three days, he has really found a spot in that arch rock work right there and usually he kind of tuck himself behind the sun coral. Because of that, I have not seen the Blenny as much in the last two days, but whenever I feed the fish, he does usually peek his head out a little bit and usually dive after the fish and his favorite food seems to be the flakes. All right, here we go. Primary flakes, one of uh, my favorite flake food. All right, let's see here. That's a pretty generous portion. Look at that. Uh, you guys don't know I got a pearly jawfish, but we'll talk about this little guy in a future video. Today we're gonna, oh, there he is. You guys see him? There is the Molly Miller Blenny. I think he's eating a little bit too well in this tank. Maybe that's why he's not touching the Aptasias yet. Let's see if he makes a move. Hold on. In the last two or three days, he has definitely become a little bit more cryptic compared to the first two or three days where he's always up front and centered. He seems to have picked like that side or the back side of the rock as his home. As you can see right now, he's right once again the same spot right behind the Gorgonian. Uh, just kind of like waiting for food to drift past and he'll dart out, grab the food and dart back. At this moment, I do not see him eating any of the Aptasias. Uh, maybe he is, but it's not really making a dent at this moment. So I keep an eye out on it. Uh, once again, the fish has just entered the tank for a week. So he is still slowly adjusting and I have been feeding this tank really well. So maybe he does not have such a... Uh, a uh, high drive to eat Aptasia. I don't know. Whatever the case is, I'm gonna keep an eye out on that little dude. I'll keep you guys posted. My uh, treatment towards Aptasia moving forward is gonna be like for these larger ones, I'll use F Aptasia or Aptasia X to uh, take care of the big ones. And from my experience, taking care of these big ones usually spawn the little babies, like the ones uh, clustered around the Zoas. And that's where I hope the Mala Miller Blenny will come in and pick these off. I really want um, the, the Blenny to kind of take care of the babies as they come out. As I was going like this and this around the tank, you may have spotted some new corals. Uh, that Aiken Conley, as well as that one right there, I picked up yesterday. Um, a local reefer is breaking down his tank, so I just swung by, uh, bought these from him. Same thing with this toll stew right there. And like I mentioned a little bit earlier, I did also pick up a uh, pearly jarfish and this is a fish I'm really excited about because I've always really loved how interactive the jarfish is. But once again, I'm gonna let him kind of settle in and uh, this video is long enough already. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this little fella uh, down the road. I also picked up that toxic hammer in the back from the same local reefer that's uh, breaking down his tank. And right now I'm just kind of letting him chill, um, getting used to the tank parameters. And later on, I'm gonna move him to a slightly higher flow area, probably at a front or to this end. Tomorrow, I'm actually gonna swing by another local reefer who is shutting down a system. And I was uh, gonna pick up two or three nice chunks of corals from him to really start building up the coral population of this tank so that we can start filling this tank up a little bit. To be frank, uh, the last 
maybe like four or five months has pretty been stagnant uh, since I was dealing with dinos and then the uh, fallouts after the dino. But I think like right now, especially with the help of Mastertronic, the parameters are finally back in check and things are stabilizing. So I'm hoping to finally be able to start adding corals again, uh, especially the more sensitive corals that I was a little bit nervous about adding uh, before. Also helps that a lot of really nice local deals started popping up, uh, whether it's people moving or people shutting system down. So when you see deals like that, you just got to jump on them and I'm a little bit more confident because the system is more stable now especially with the help of Mastertronic so um, we'll see how things goes crossing my fingers and uh, of course as always I'll bring you guys along with my journey now with that said I'm gonna wrap this video up right here obviously a lot more things I want to talk about like the jawfish all the extra new corals and whatnot but I'll save that for next week's video so if you guys enjoyed this video please do me a favor and leave a like and if you are not subscribed and you're interested in seeing what corals I pick up next week and some of the tips and tricks I picked up along the way be sure to subscribe and I'll keep you posted and of course I'll keep you guys up to date on how the Blenny is doing against Aptasias. With that said, I'll see you guys next Sunday at 12.30 p.m. sharp. Bye. Shout out to the Petco at Congressional Plaza. Quite nice actually compared to some of the other Petco I've been to. So Petco's are not all built the same.